Can I not play Mr. Panda Man for the first match of my day? <laughs> I would like to, an easier opponent so I can wake up, please. I woke up 10 minutes ago. Well, it is what it is. We'll play Mr. Panda Man. Must knock his rank down so the main account can go further. Okay, actually, we are offered Giga Hot Garbage. Uh. Well, maybe we lost, chat. <laughs> All three of these things are unpeckable, and uh, this is not that good. I mean, this is okay if you want to play standard, but obviously, we're not playing standard, so. And cost control is like unplayable aggro. Could be a Dick Storms. Fortunately, Dick Storms is in fact not actually very good. This formation though is actually good. So <laughs> this is the one we use. Oh, I think this is uh yeah, there we go. Is he even playing standard here? I can't even tell. What is this pack? This is Fire Badger, right? Oh, it's Aerial. I see. Maybe he wants to play Sludge Boat or something. Nah, I feel like this positioning worked out like as bad as it really could for us. Our arcs are shooting sludges and our storms are shooting crawlers. Well, I'm urging. You know, Ass Storm is actually pretty good here. Like, I think if you ever have storms in your aggro, you basically always want to see Ass Storm. Oh, also, I kind of fucked up the spacing here. That's okay. The corner spot's still intact. I really don't hate the idea of it being a salt storm. I wonder if it's uh, worth missing a damage item, though. That's the main question for me. Because missing a damage item is pretty critical to not do. Or to not miss. Like, this is good tempo, right? But this is a bit too important. So I would really like Orange Man to be on the right here. Why does my alarm have to ring right as we're doing this? What's an alarm? Nobody asked. Oh, well, real Zat, grabs me the first. This is definitely going to be one of those games where it's like, Orange Man is actively bad. <laughs> uh, I fucking hate Orange Man. It's crazy. The Specialist is actually just the most useless thing in this whole game. <laughs> it's so sad, because I feel like you see there's so many games where Orange Man just like, single-handedly wins you the game, and now I feel like Orange Man is more often than not actively bad. Poor Orange Man. All right, well, we have intensive damage item Mustang. It's pretty good. Are we gonna lose the game if he plays War Factory though? Not actually sure. I mean, he is aerial. I think we can just play Scorp Sting if he tries to play War Factory.
And I think that we'll just say uh, we're going to recruit the Mustang at level 1 and level it instantly. Might even buy a second Mustang right here. Oh, apparently put the damage on him on a Wasp. What a fucking psycho. Anyways, we're just going to do this, shut down all the Wasp shenanigans. Next turn we'll range the Mustangs. I might missile this. Some tempo sounds cool. If it happens to hit a crawler, it hits a crawler. Did only hit three of them though. That's a bit sad. Maybe we get the tower though. You know, I'm not really sure how our Mustang that was on the tower right behind Orange Man ended up being like really, really far from what Orange Man is shooting, but that appears to be what's happened. Not that it matters this round, but <laughs> kind of weird. Regardless, looks like the missile play worked out, so that's cool. Orange Typhoon is most definitely Orange Typhoon. This drop is pretty overpowered. Man, I really wish that we had not spent our item on this, because I really, really, really am heavily disincentivized from going out of that now. Is this a War Factory hold, by the way? I mean, it definitely is, but... And so is that, I think. Wish you could see a grid. I'm pretty sure you can fit a War Factory in either of these holes. It might just be Take Farseer for EMP, but that's, like, pretty troll. I think I should just take the Badgers. I think that makes the most sense. The only problem with it is it could result in me uh, setting myself on fire. We could also just take the Typhoon and just say it doesn't matter that we have roll overlap. Like this thing is pretty busted. If we get another item, it's just nuts. I think that's what we should do. I think we just don't care about the Badger. Orange Typhoon's too good. Alright, these must be ranged that you're going to be on the field. It is known. This guy did pretty good last rounds. In level 1. He has ranged the sledges. Looks like he is uh, trying to emulate a Shalabu strat. Huh. Oh, Black Screen HS, you gonna try the Bazaar? I'm sure I would be down to try it. I've heard Raynad talk about that game since I don't fucking know when. <laughs> when was the last time Raynad was streaming Hearthstone on the regular? I feel like it's been a decade, literally. But yeah, I used to watch Raynad play Hearthstone, so I've heard him talk about the Bazaar plenty. I heard some friends talking about that recently. Is that like actually supposed to be coming out soon? Like, last I heard a few months ago, it was. No timetable still. Alright, well that is our item. That is why we took this orange typhoon. Post beta starts on December. I see. I see, I see. Never resets in the beta. Hmm. Intradosting. Yeah, I think the thing that I heard, which I assume is true, is that uh, the game is asynchronous, or at least some of the formats that it has are asynchronous, which I think is cool. I think that makes it. Wow, this is really sad. This Mustang is like 1 XP off. Um, I heard that it's asynchronous, which I think is really good for streaming, so I think that part's really cool. We don't actually need more damage from Orange Man right now, except for this left sledge. Maybe we'll just level this Typhoon, actually. Ah, 
Actually, that's a bit too much equipment on that side, I think. I kind of just want to take, like, tower attack again. Maybe we do just do that. I think it's so strong when you're playing Typhoons and Mustangs. We'll buy one shield, I think. Make sure that we don't get smoked. Got loose. Wow, that's like massive mistake from him. So I'm not sure exactly how effective Loose is versus Typhoon, but I already wasn't planning on going harder in the Typhoon. And versus Mustang, this is actively nerfing its Squellers. Well, Red Typhoon is doing the Red Typhoon thing. Looks good. You would think that him clicking loose is a bit better for us. That's okay though. Alright, so we got our drop. We know that we're not going to be offered Fortress. Which is definitely what we want to be if our opponent is Sludge. That is for sure. Also, this thing has damage item. So you'd really like to kill that. I think that this is a reasonable enough take. I guess his Antir is effectively non-existent, so the Orange Wraith could be okay. He has like one Farseer. I think I kind of want the balls though. Like his Sledges are never going to be very good at clearing the balls. So I think that makes us relatively happy to take the balls here. If he just like oils and Vulcans me, I'm gonna be really sad though. I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. I think I'm just gonna shield this again though. Cause I think if this Mustang gets fired that we're we might just lose the game. I want this ball in a place where I can beacon it to the towers. I also need to buy Fortress this turn, probably. He's sending the balls on a journey, it appears. Oh, sure, black screen. Yeah, if you want to PM that to be on Discord, I'd happily take it. I'm not too interested in cosmetics for things like that, so. Not too interested in purchasing my own, but I would happily receive a key. No one's reached out to me officially about a key, so. I appreciate you. Definitely interested in the game. Nice. I think the fort might have leveled off that. That's a pretty okay turn for us, I think, since we got uh, double tower cheese like that. Oh, it didn't level. That sucks. Got another intensive. Pretty close game so far. We're round 7 and neither one of us will have HP. So I think that he might commit further into this. Yeah, this could be like a level 5 ball. I think we're just going to... Uh, I guess put a missile here. And maybe like add a crawler and that's it or something. Since I think he's like you to DM with one for me, hell yeah. Thank you, thank you. At some point we should definitely add like three more blue mustangs, but I think we need to add more forts first. How these balls do last round? They did absolutely fucking terribly. <laughs> um, hmm. 
I don't know, how about we just do this, like... Thing is, like, I need this thing to go towards this, and I also need the crawler to not kill my fucking Mustang later. So it's pretty difficult to get what we want. Might just go ahead and click bubble. I think bubble is quite reasonable. I'm just gonna double miss that in case it's still there. Alright, so he has clicked some Vulcans, but he has not clicked any oil. Not really sure why he clicked Vulcan, to be honest. Like, obviously you click one if you want to set me on fire with oil one turn, right? But... I'm not really sure why else we have clicked Vulcan. Like, what was there in the board to Vulcan? He just thinks I'm not going to... protect my Mustangs, I guess? I don't really understand. Really nice tower timing for us. Get to drink all this beautiful level 5 sludge juice. Orange Man kind of useful at this point in the game now, by the way. Kind of nice. Oh wait, this is an Ignite Vulcan. What the fuck? Hello? Ignite? That was not what I thought I was playing against. I thought that was Scorch. How bizarre. Alright, well I would imagine some Badgers look pretty okay for us. I might even Field Maintenance the Badgers. Triple Blue Fire Badger drop Field Maintenance sounds pretty good. Especially once we get level 2 Tower Defense. Technically he could take the Wraiths. Eh, nah, it's not very good for me if he takes the Wraiths. I think there might be a Rhino here potentially, so we'll miss with that just to be safe. I don't think the ball is really doing anything. Maybe I should have bought a blue fort though, actually. Maybe it was blue fort, blue mustang. If I could redo my turn, I think that's what I would do. And I think that if he has clicked ignite Vulcan, we are probably supposed to arrange the forts right now. We're probably not supposed to wait. Same for the tanks. Like, this is our main way to clear tanks, right? So... I think it just makes sense. So maybe we just don't actually care about having um the thing I was talking about. Max defense. We'll add that for this Mustang. Not really sure why he clicked Ignite Vulcan if he's planning on clicking Melter right afterwards, but I guess he just likes having multiple things that can kill the forts. Pretty sure we're gonna lose the round pretty much no matter what to oil, because it's gonna kill our Giga Mustang, so. Uh, maybe that's not quite true. Really, really good round if the fort's all level. Actually, insane looking rounds, holy fuck. Wow. I cannot believe we won those rounds. Like, I guess we haven't won yet, but I'm pretty sure that we can't lose in this spot, so. Space Age info drops tomorrow, Poggers? Hell yeah. I'm so hyped to play Space Age. Like, I played the mod that Space Age is based upon. Well, I mean, not based upon. <laughs> it's a pretty obvious uh, angle for a Factorio thing, but... I played the Space Exploration mod prior to Space Age being announced, and... Super excited for it. So this Swart Bubble did not level, meaning that it can be broken by Melter EMP. That's not good. Can also have a Giga level Mustang. 
when he is not gifted any more tower oil. Star Giga Mustang will live this turn. We could certainly beacon the forts forward to attempt to make less of the smoke relevance. I think we're just going to attempt to smoke this side. Like, it's probably not going to work, but maybe it will. Definitely always want all the fort levels, definitely always all of that. Giga Mustang is quite important. Maybe leveling one fort would have been better though, actually. Yeah, in retrospect, maybe one fort was better. I'm going to put this here, even though I normally wouldn't. I think adding this guy over here makes sense. Pretty expected. So hopefully Mr. Blue 4 on the left actually wins this time and doesn't lose this Vulcan slash Melter combo. I can't believe we're having such a hard time clearing crawlers still. Maybe we need to click AP. Or maybe it's just three blue forts next turn. It's probably three blue forts. It's probably like three blue forts and click elite if we can. Can't believe Ignite's fucking us up so bad. I guess it fucks us up less bad once we get a lead though. What a long fucking game by the way. We have Ball Prod. That one's quite strong. It's also Acid for him though. <laughs> Same merch thing. Also the technicians. Yeah, I don't know why this game's having such bad uh, performance. I think I might need to just like restart it. Not sure. At least we are dropping zero frames on the the stream side. I think I'm gonna give this guy the, the ball prod. I think I like that. The boat food nerf in, yeah. Alright, I know this guy did an okay amount of work, but I think that does not matter. So if we uh buy two blue forts, we need 1300 for that, right? Maybe it's a blue fort and a blue mustang. Blue Fort Blue Mustang is 1,000, plus elites. I think that's what we're after. The damage definitely matters. I think we're going to put him back here as well. Hopefully he can dodge more Meltra missiles that way. Maybe just take this Typhoon level. He's not doing that good, but it's a way to spend the money that's okay, I guess. Alright, he's got Suck. I don't think Suck makes very much sense. This white fort in the middle here, I might just need to get sold or something. He's a bit too useless. I shouldn't have bought him white in the first place. I need time for all this no longer. Time to me at tacos? I know. The evil bastard. Always bringing temptation to the forefront. Unfortunately, our Giga Stang is just turbo feeding. Due to the smoke. The elite fort's doing the elite fort thing though. Honestly, I don't really know why Panda Man tried to go for this angle, because I don't think it beats elite fort ever. But, like, this is, I think, it's part of why the sledge angle is just bad. Like, there's no pivot out that beats for it. Miss B-Man? What do you mean you miss B-Man? B-Man's playing like right now probably. He was playing last night. Bye, John. Did you see B-Man's uh, hype video for the 201 squad for the Mag 1 tourney by the way? You like B-Man content? This is so sick. Like emotionally. <laughs> Bro's down bad. 
Need some B-Man gameplay. There's worms. I don't think worms matter, do they? I mean, it could be like, okay, I guess. I think they're just gonna fucking die, though. So I think the drop sucks. But that's fine if the drop sucks. Could just put the worms here. I mean, it does take eight years to go through, but it's like an option, I guess. I don't know. It seems pretty useless to me. Hello, oh, B-Man. What the heck? Is that actually B-Man? I don't know. Chat, what's the lore? Is that the real B-Man? Surely no one would name themselves 201 B-Man, right? Hello, B-Man. Good to see you. I liked your video for your squad. Okay, we should have uh, done something else this time, probably, but that's okay. Shit. I should have gotten two intensives. I should have leveled up for it, maybe. I like this left push, though. I don't know why, chat, but Vulcans just like ruined my performance for some reason. Alright, we got Panda Man. Panda Man has been slain. I don't know why Panda Man tried to do a Jabu strat into a Vulcan Ultra Pivot, but. And a man down. Yeah, plus what you should have done? Well, it's okay. Panda Man chose a bad strat, so... It doesn't actually matter how much we yap. Why'd he try to go Vulcan Melter, though? I mean, honestly, the better question probably is, like, why did he commit to Sludge in the first place? Because Sludge is terrible. I really want to play Jabu and see what he does when I click Fortress. I'm pretty sure he just dies. Like, I can't fathom how you could just not die when you click Sludge. The answer is you lose. <laughs> That's all Sludge does. It just loses. Why did he do this, they chat? I guess he didn't know... Oh, it's because he didn't know that I'm Elite Fort. That's why. It's because he built two Vulcans with range and ignite, and then I clicked Fort the next turn. So he never got to see my fort bar. That's why I did this. Okay, never mind. Yeah. That makes more sense. He had no choice. <laughs> Pressing charge shot arc will definitely make you regret your life choices. <laughs> XDD. Alright, well I kind of hate all these things. I guess I hate this the least. I definitely hate all of them, though. Maybe I hate this the least. People are saying they don't understand how you won with zero chaff clear. What the fuck? Spectator chat's a different beast, man. Those guys just don't have eyes. Unless they're high MMR, then they tend to have eyes. They don't know what elite stings do. Well, as is tradition with the uh, Moostang opener, we may be clicking a third Moostang. I'm pretending that does something. I think that's the play. I think I'm gonna spread this more. I think I'll put this here instead. To draw the storm fire. Unfortunately, vertical is not that great versus storm, but it's where we want it to be for the rest of the game, so that's why we do it this way. 
as multi-hack chaff clear. Mr. N underscore Sokka would have you believe that is the case. Once he debated me into thinking that hacker is like mono hacker is like a real comp. <laughs> He's like play quad deck hacker time, that's good. <laughs> I did play it, I did win some games with it, but it is awful. That is not a real comp. So arguably multi-hack is chaff clear. Arguably it's also bad chaff clear. <laughs> Channel needs a command warning viewers not try these strats at home. Maybe we should put that in the title. Don't try this at home. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Parentheses are real. Unsafe strategies, all caps. Is that like sufficiently clickbaity? All right, well, he is Fire Badger. He could click the old button and delete my entire board. That does not sound very good, does it? We could click redeploy. I feel like it's hard for me to gain a lot of value out of that at the moment. It is good later. I think maybe we just take a shield drop. It's a bit dubious, but... I don't really hate it. Think you can play anything up to 1.5? You can play anything up to like whatever MMR your your skill gets you to. But it's also a function of how bad your strategies are. <laughs> so if the strat's like really, really bad, you might be handicapping yourself a bit much. I played Fang Forts 2.1. I don't think that means Fang Forts 2.1 comp. I don't think that means that at all. <laughs> I think it means something like very much the opposite of that, in fact. It's like, we got there in spite of it being a terrible comp, you know? Hopefully our shield does not die. We might just be stuck on his shield and die because of that. Shield's very bad for our board. It's like both good and bad. Like we like having it, but playing against it this round's just ridiculously bad. Mustangs can't break shields. At least we broke it though, I guess, and we look like we don't lose our shield, so that's pretty good. Oh, do I actually win the round? He doesn't have upshoot. We save some HP. We don't win, I don't think, but we save HP. Takes too long to clear all the crawlers to win, but that's fine. Saving HP one crawler at a time. Oh, you shot a fire badger? Let's go. Shoot another fire badger, fuck it. Mr. Phoenix? Think Donk? The fire badgers? Brother. <laughs> Alright, well our shield lived and his shield died. That's pretty good. We have a fortress. The cookie has arrived to be cut. Hello, thank you, bear like. Appreciate that one. Maybe we will not instantly lose the game. Sounds good. The storm is color distractible as well. Not sure if we'll do that this turn. Also, he wasted some resources over here. He built a badger over there. Not like full waste, because we would have pulled that side of the board anyways, but... It's not going to help against the push on this side. I will kind of like to click Moostang range, but it might be wrong here. I would like to click Moostang range and maybe like one crawler on the flank here. And maybe one more late crawler after that. I think I like that the most. You should always shoot this, I think. I need to put it a little closer to stop this from pulling it once I put a crawler there. It might still get pulled. I'm not actually sure. This might be positioned perfectly to where it always shoots. It would not surprise me if Tungdal knew that would always shoot this way, no matter what. I don't know if that always shoots that way, so... But right now we're doing this, and it's really good. 
There's a Badger right there though, so it's a bit less good. It's still worthwhile, I think. Makes the first Storm Volley miss, for sure. Also delays his Chaff, which lets us kill his Badger. Much less game is RNG or Luck. Well, I'd say if you're like more than 200 MMR above your opponent, you're probably going to win like 95% of the time, in most cases, if you're playing seriously, so... It's a very skill-based game. Not to say there's no luck, but it is majority skill. There's a lot of RNG still, but it's like how you can use the RNG that matters, so like most like auto battler type games in that way. All strats are definitely not created equally though. So some strats are much more vulnerable to RNG than others. The best strategies tend to be the ones that are like extremely not vulnerable to RNG. Luck determines 100% of round 1 storm fights. I mean you can claim that it's luck, like where you think your opponent will place a storm, but it's like fairly predictable. It's like a 50-50 usually. Unless you know the player, then you can know where they're going to put them. Certainly the storms themselves, like the pattern in which they shoot is random though, that's for sure. But starting positioning, winning or not, is not very random. I really kind of don't hate quick cooldown here, but I think I probably should hate it. We could always consider clicking replicate, it's probably not very good. Wasp Storm is unfortunately good against us. I think we'll just take speed maybe. Speed's always good if you have forts. I don't think Mr. Rhino is that useful. Perhaps he is gone, so. Shows an underground on himself, makes sense. Oh, hey, this is what I was talking about, by the way. So the answer is yes, the storm does, in fact, shoot this way. I even put it farther to the right to see if it wouldn't do that, but it does. So I think Tungdal's storm positioning is like very, very particular, or if you're playing aggro. I know they're baby fortresses. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not a a board for baby fortresses to be running around on. I'm protected. It's in fact, a very bad board to be a baby fortress on. A lot of orange men. Hello, Ruxy. Glad to be a help. Well, there's most certainly fire. We might put fire here for ourselves. I think this is okay for me. You know, we could do this. This might even get a second storm shot, and it might never die. How likely do we think that is? Gets hit by 7,000 plus... Oh, it's a level 2 storm? Mm, I mean, only half the storm is shooting over here, right? Like, I think it's gonna die to the badger. Pretty sure this dies. It's like a pixel difference or something. Maybe we do it like this. We just want it to die very slowly. That's the only goal. Ever buy five shields to counter and send you but I put away underground threat instead. <laughs> put my hands, dude. Uh, that is, that's a mood right there. Not an uncommon occurrence. Oh wait, this moose thing might still die. I think, like... 
two, maybe one third of it dies, depending on how far it walks forward. No, my Mustang. Bruh, the whole thing died. It's doomed. Well, we had to position the Mustang like that because of turn one, so feels bad, man. Maybe we'll put another fort there, so we can't die like that again. There is a bulk and there is oil. Hmm. I sure wonder what will happen to us this turn, Smile. The moose things go moo. I don't think they do. I just like calling them moose things. The balls are like almost good for me here, I think. Maybe I should consider buying the balls. Like, it's really good if it clicks Vulcan, right? And it's another tank for me. Maybe it is good. I don't think we get there if we just click Fort Buttons. So we're gonna make this play. I really want one that goes right at the Smelter, but I can't really get that. Or we're going to assume we get oiled, so... We'll do this. We think if the balls are gonna do anything, they probably have to be, uh... I've still this turn, and it might just be a melter like right here against the sky. So do something like this. Maybe this splitting is good. I think I like that. It might just not split there. There might just be a melter right there. I feel like the fort level matters a lot. But maybe Moose Thing is better. Let me click like attack and everything and get some temp speed for the balls. Let's not go for some insta lock cheese. What's the mechanic behind the prediction betting? Uh, basically, it's just like I think you generate currency to bet with like every X amount of time, and you can buy it with your like uh, your currency that you also generate every X amount of time. Maybe it's the same system now. Not actually sure. I'm not very interested in the match betting, so I don't interact with it very much, but some people like betting on matches. I think you can also like buy uh, betting currency if you want to, like real money, but imagine doing that. <laughs> Just part of their monetization. Alright, so did the balls actually look good that turn? Anyone notice? I forgot to pay attention because I was answering chat. <laughs> also, he didn't oil me. Hello, sir. He did not. Oh, fuck. Dude, this game sucks so bad, man. Literally the maximum possible amount of oil and fire has been offered. We have not clicked this button and then this button pops up. We are so fucked. Were the balls good, though? Balls are balls? I died, got stuck in trap, and died? Okay, thank you. Cool. Good to know. Armor is not better. Their goal is to kill the Melter. Uh, I guess this is actually just okay because we like stats in the fort, right? You can also acid and oil us, smile. Also, looks like this is working. So cool. Cool play over there. This is half an amp core and it gets us the upgrade, so it's fine, I guess. Yeah, definitely did not get anything done, right? I think I want to sell the bird. I don't think it's terrible, but I think we need the moose thing levels really bad. Oh wait, have I just... Oh no, I forwarded that. Never mind. I thought I had never added anything there. <laughs> I might add another crawly right here. It's against both Melters and the Vulcan, right? Hmm. 
we oil their board. If you want to win the game, you oil their board, but I do not ever set people's boards on fire with oil. Unless I'm playing defense and there's no way to keep from it. I can say nonsense mechanics, so I do not use it. But you are correct, that is the correct play here, to attempt to use in some way. If you would like to win the video game, that is the correct play. Alright, the forts are kinda doing the thing. Looks like we might be getting there. Nice, the blue forts are doing the blue fort thing, we love to see that. Excellent work, blue forts. We have beaten the Fire Menace. Good stuff. Now we can click Elite. When I fist, fist is like bugged in like four different ways. <laughs> fist is useless, unfortunately. Let's see, he does not have any light fangs, so Bombard does not seem that incredible for me. The item is definitely okay. Why do your forts do 50% more DPS and 50% more HP than mine? Uh, I am an expert cookie cutter. If you cut enough cookies, you too will have great forts. I'm not sure if the item is better or not, chat. Maybe just the itemized Mustang is the best play here. It's a very interesting play that's happening right here. <laughs> I think I really want Elite this turn. I would like to buy more Chaff Clear as well. Oh, also there is Undergrounds. Uh, do we ever just sell these balls? Like, these guys are doing fuck all, right? I think that's just a waste of money. I think it's really important we get the port upgrades. I think we want to do something like this. Because we don't want our towers side at underground, right? That'd be really bad. Maybe we'll just add like another shield back here for this moose thing? I don't know. Did he just not use his undergrounds? Oh, he put it behind himself. That's fair. I think I could have lost very easily though, if he put it behind my base and I didn't respond to it. This does kill the tower eventually, right? Maybe just not doing that and porting again is better? I don't think it's very relevant though, I guess. Hard to say. Dude, it's so hard to clear his chaff. Just white crawlers. Ridiculous. Takes 10 billion years. We have one top to the melter. Get out of here. Through shitty fucking melter unit. Garbage. Oh no, my forts. We didn't kill the tower fast enough. It's like half a second too late. Bad units. Yes. Or OP. I just think they put suck on the Maltry and well they get one top, so. I don't think it really does anything. Oh, this guy did have suck actually. He still gets one topped. I don't know what's up with this. <laughs> Interesting bug. There is fire again. Uh, honestly, I sort of don't hate the Wraiths. Because, like, we're having a really hard time clearing this chaff, right? But it does just die to the fire, so... <laughs> it's underwater. I don't know how to feel about this. Like, is this a good play? I can't tell if it's a bait. And I'll just be ranged Wraiths. Even, like, degen Wraiths might be correct. What if we get some Wasps and some Wraiths? Is that good? I think that might be it. Is that really better than more forts? Maybe, but only because of fire, I think. I think probably about like this is what we're looking for. Maybe like one super late one. I don't know if shields matter.
Probably should have ranged the race. I should have like sold it ball. Oh. Put all the wraiths and a beacon to my tower. Sure. That will certainly eventually kill my tower, I guess. I don't know that it kills it at a relevant enough time for him. Also, did he just not fire in front of me? I guess he wasted his fire in this tower push play. That seems kind of poor. I don't know how I feel about that one. If he kills this left tower, though, it's really good for him. I don't think that's it, though. Looks like we are doing the thing. I believe we have slain Tungdal. Excellent. The forts have done the fortress thing. I don't know if this Wraith play is that good. It's hard to tell in the face of this. Your forts outrange the Meltry EMP. Uh, basically what tends to happen when you have this set up on your bar is that EMP has like a 30% chance to hit you if it breaks the bubble-ish. Doesn't happen super often. But if they're orange or blue, it's fairly uncommon it hits you. This guy gets hit a lot more often because he's on the line and doesn't actually use all of his range a lot of times, but these ones back here tend to not get hit super often. So even though the setup looks kind of bad versus EMP, it tends to not actually be that bad. It's been a while since you have ranged elite. Apucci talked me into playing ranged elite like six months ago and I've been playing ranged elite ever since. It's so fucking fun. I love this fort setup. It's just really, really fun. Oh my god, we're gold! Wow.